So, hi everyone. Uh, yeah, it works. Okay, okay. So, uh, how to get it? How to get things started right? Uh, well, what what are the critical points to keep in mind uh, when you creating a new project? Uh, I will show some examples and my tips when you starting a new project. And most of this will be from, let's say, e-commerce world because I uh, work for e-commerce projects. And a lot of it will be about HTML and CSS. But it's uh, more about uh, how you think about it. Uh, so think about it and maybe you will change your mindset how you think about these things. No, we will prepare a second slide which works, but it's not working. So, can you read it? Yeah, yeah? <laughs> super. So, uh, after uh, don't have uh, epilepsy. <laughs> uh, so, this is my favorite picture. Uh, it reminds me my beginning as a front-end developer. And uh, yeah, I started uh, like I fixed one bug and then I have then another bug. So I have to think about what to do better. And uh, I no longer watch... Okay, I... I don't know. It's it's not. Uh, yeah, it's yeah, it's uh, somewhere there. It's not like uh, you know. It, it's not my idea. Uh, so, thanks to this, uh, I will tell you uh, some advice to not. Uh, you couldn't rewrite your project every year. So the main points for me are the using the right stack, uh, make documentation, be consistent, some simplicity, let's say, uh, make style guide and think about web speed. So yeah, no, no, this, this is not all. So uh, I am Martin Koras and I have been working as a front-end developer or coder for more than 10, 10 years. And as I said, I usually work for e-commerce projects. So let's go for the, let's say, first chapter. And this is choosing the right stack. Uh, basically, you have <coughs> two ways how to start it. Uh, first is you can choose a brand new stack. You can start from scratch. Um, it's good when you start, let's say, one project per year, maybe less, uh, because it takes a lot of time and also it, it takes a lot of money. But uh, for me, uh, I choose the boilerplate project, let's say. And this is some empty project where you have some uh, building things like Twig, uh, compilation of CSS, JavaScript, minification, and this. And you can uh, basically update it for uh, when you start a new project, you can update it. Uh, some versions of Node, for example. And then uh, you can also uh, take a new version of this project and put it to your older projects. Uh, so you can update it to your older projects uh, relatively easy. Uh, maybe you can think about some way like, okay, I took uh, a project from my another client, copy, and I will delete all the things about my client. No, this is not a good way, and I will tell you later uh, why. So, uh, in the end of uh, every chapter, I will give you some advice. So, now, uh, close, choosing the right stack uh, is underrated, so please take time to choose the right stack. 
So let's move on to documentation. Um, let's say documentation isn't necessary for you, right? It's uh, for people who will use it later. So I will show you some uh, examples from one project, which is, I don't know, one year old. And there is free readme files. So this is uh, from first readme file. And it says, OK, install node, Bower and gulp. OK, it's basically normal things. But I was like, OK, which version? Because you know, this is list of my node versions in my system. And I, I, I don't know which one. So it's for me, it's useless information because everything basically is working for uh, on a node now. So uh, think for your colleagues, not for you because node is, uh, the version is most important. Uh, this is from the second readme file. Uh, it's probably fine, but uh, there isn't a screen CSS file in the folder. So this this happens when you uh, when you copy uh, your old project or another project, and you never delete all the things. So. About documentation, you have to think like the documentation is not for a colleague, uh, is for a colleague, not for me, but you never know, right? So let's continue to consistency. And um, this is some buzzword, let's say. But uh, OK, uh, third <coughs> readme file. It's relatively fine consistency. Code is very important, right? But uh, when you read it, you maybe think like, um, OK, but I have styling, right? And all of these uh, can make for me a styling or as lint or another lintra. And I don't need it this in the readme file on document or documentation because I write by one command and it will do everything, and I don't care about these things. But in the same project, there is three random files. And you know, this is the consistency, right? I, I don't care if you take the first, the second, the third run. I don't care. But the whole project must be the same. So if you have the first, code, type code, I don't know how to say it. Uh, you have to write all the code in the same style, right? I, I will choose the second one, but uh, it's up to you. But, you know, write the same code. And there is there will be a problem with uh, chat GPT, right? Where is, where is Roman? Uh, OK. And Stack Overflow or these things, because you basically uh, find the solution, copy the code, and OK, it works, never mind. No, you have to every time rewrite the code uh, for the consistency as the rest of the code. So think about it and rewrite these codes. So another device, uh, consistency means that I still have the same feeling from the code, usually bad. So next chapter, simplicity. Um, OK, it's really easy. You have to use small components and let's say small logical parts. Uh, OK, I, I think there is a lot of uh, React developers, maybe Vue. Uh, so you have some micro components and these things. I don't have it. So I have to think what is my component and what is I will use in the different page. So the blue rectangles are basically my components. And I know it. They can grab it and use it everywhere in the project. And it will work 
properly everywhere. So uh, you have to use small components in logical units and shorter pieces of code. Uh, one thing about another project I will see, uh, I will saw in one file the whole CSS for all product detail page, which has like 1500, 000, 15,000 uh, rows of CSS. So, no, it's not the best way because you don't know where are you in the code and what to do. So, please do short pieces of code. Uh, yeah, there is the really easy advice. Um, another chapter, style guide. Uh, let's say style guide is something which you needed. Uh, maybe again, if you're using uh, uh, React or these things, you have storybooks. I don't have it. And uh, for me, it's not effective to write a storybook. And I have to do something like static page. And I put all the components to one static page, which will look like uh, this one. There is some typography, grid, uh, buttons, tooltips, mm, forms, galleries, videos, some graphic parts, and these things. And every time I can open this, yeah, it's a static page, but I can open it and I know, okay, these all components, I, I have it. And it's the easiest way how to have some style guide, let's say, and you don't have to write storybooks and these things. But if you use React, you have option with this. So uh, storybook is something which you need it. Like, seriously, you need it. And the last chapter is web speed. And I don't see the mayor of the web speed in Czech Republic. So cool. Uh, so uh, another advice, but uh, this time at the beginning. So the speed of the size is not about the size of uh, size of data. It's more about the correct order. Uh, this page, you might know it. And when you're starting, it's most important uh, LCP and CLS. Uh, LCP, you have to know on every page when you see the graphic design, what is your LCP element? Uh, is it this image or this image? And you have to think about how to download it or render it as soon as possible. And uh, about CLS, you have to uh, use width and height attributes for your images. And also don't think about some content movement and floating top bars and some crazy these things. Then you have CLS on zero. And um, let's say this is uh, more from the e-commerce world and for me it's the rule of the five files. So it means when I downloaded the HTML document I have to think about five files, what I uh, have to download as soon as possible. It's one font in three weights, so it's maybe three files, one CSS file and the LCP element. So these five files is most important for me. And then I can download, I don't know, JavaScript, icons, the rest of the images, whatever, Google Tech Manager. But these five files is the most important for me. So the last a code I don't need it is not supposed to be in the code, right? So yeah, it's also for you. So yeah, this is all. Thank you for your time and I, I hope that we can see later this way. 
Thank you, Martin. Uh, after this talk, we will ho ho hold a small break, but now I want to ask you if you have any questions on Martin. Don't hesitate. Don't. You don't have a... Okay, one question. Uh, okay. Yeah, when you mentioned the five files, um, uh -huh. you, where does something like React fit into that? <laughs> cool question. Show us. Um, I don't know, seriously, because I usually work, as I said, for static pages. So I don't know where the place for the React is. Maybe I think about who will know it, but... <laughs> Okay, maybe. so six files. <laughs> maybe, maybe. For record. Yeah, to repeat, I, I asked the question because usually it's the uh, ja like React or JavaScript part that really slows down the site, like this slows down the time for the page to appear. 